Yom Tov, that's Hebrew for good day. This is Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Brook, and you know who you are. I want to welcome you and thank you for being here today on this ninth day of April, 2020. Uh, you know, I think we've all heard of the millennials and how they feel entitled to everything. Uh, and I wonder, where did they get that from? Is it from Dr. Spock, from Mr. Rogers, from their parents? I mean, really, who thinks that you should be proud for receiving a participation trophy. Boy, when I was working, I saw the worst form of entitlement, which they called a meritorious pay system. I believe that system was the brainchild of lazy managers who didn't want to spend time writing an evaluation, and it was accepted by lazy HR departments that used to be okay when they were called personnel, who didn't want to review the documents. So many managers can't write a good evaluation because they were never trained on how to do it correctly. And today, it, it isn't even their job since the employee is the one writing down what their objectives are and also how well they accomplish them. And here's the kicker. If you simply meet your objectives, you get a raise. It sounds good, except for the fact that a meritorious system means you should do more than just what you are supposed to do in order to earn a raise. Doing the job you're supposed to do isn't earning anything. Meeting your objectives is not meritorious, it's expected. No one should receive a meritorious raise for simply doing what they are supposed to do. Now, of course, this being a ministry, let's see what the Bible says about doing what you are supposed to do. This is from the Complete Jewish Bible, it's Luke 17, seven through 10. And it's Yeshua talking to his Talmudim, which is Hebrew for students. If one of you has a slave tending the sheep or plowing, when he comes back from the field, will you say to him, come along now, sit down and eat? No, <laughs> you'll say, get my supper ready, dress for work and serve me until I have finished eating and drinking. After that, you may eat and drink. Does he thank the slave because he did what he was told to do? No. It's the same with you. When you have done everything you were told to do, you should be saying, we're just ordinary slaves. We have only done our duty. Are you wondering where I'm going with this? Good question. I don't care what happens at your job, but I am concerned about what happens between you and God. People are being taught that simply doing something the way it is supposed to be done is deserving of praise. But that is not how it is with God. God wants us to do more than just what we are supposed to do. Yes, if you accept Yeshua as your Messiah and observe the Ten Commandments, you can be saved. But that is no more than what you are expected to do. Remember the parable in Matthew 25, 14 about the talents? The men who gave back more than what they received were praised. But the one who gave back only what he was given was punished. Why? Well, I believe he was punished for having wasted his chance to profit from what he had been given. I believe God expects us to do more than just accept Yeshua as our Messiah and keep the Big Ten. I believe he wants us to grow in spirit and to produce fruit. And the only way to do that is to do more. We have to be willing to be ostracized and ridiculed for the way we act, the way we worship, and the things we say. In other words, we have to publicly declare our belief in God and show it in how we live our lives. If we silently worship God, we don't provide any real fruit. If we praise God and make him part of our daily speech, keeping his name always on our lips, we will distribute seeds that may grow into fruit trees. I did something very simple, which I believe to be effective in publicly praising God for others to see. When leaving friends and they say, hey, see you next time, I reply, God willing. That's all. It's a simple but effective way to remind them that I know God is in charge. Many are taught that so long as they are a good person, they go to heaven. Well, you know, you may go to heaven, but if you do, don't expect any applause or a limo to take you to a large mansion when you get there. 
Have you heard the song about the man who goes to heaven and is taken to a small rundown hut that is barely big enough to house him? When he asks, why is it so shoddy? He's told, because that's all the wood you sent. Yeshua said we should store up our treasure for heaven. That's Matthew 6, 19, which I take as meaning what we do on earth is what we get in heaven. And unlike the corporate world, God will not give you a raise for doing only what you are supposed to do. So make a choice. Go through life without doing more than just going through life or do more for the kingdom of God and be rewarded in heaven as well as blessed on earth. Now you may ask, well, what should I do? How do I make the talents given to me worth more? The answer is only one that you can decide because only you know what talents, pun intended, God has given you. And whatever you decide, it should be something that will further God's kingdom. But you are not entitled to anything. But you have unlimited access to opportunities, which can lead to blessings when you do what you can for God's glory and praise. And I don't know about you, but when I come before the Lord, I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Well, thank you for being here again. And please subscribe. Click the icons here on YouTube, but also go back to the website. There's a subscribe button in the right margin. Click on that too because they're different lists. All I do is send you notification when I do a posting. I welcome your comments. And if you don't mind, on this particular post, I would like to see people comment and, and, and share what they do to help serve God's kingdom. Maybe it'll give somebody an idea. Until next time, Lehi Throat. And Baruch Hashem.